In this video trailer, is gonna look at the question, if nobody sold, what would happen to stocks? Hey guys, one welcome to you. So interesting question, this one. If nobody, if nobody sold, what would happen to stocks? Now for this, to answer this question, we've got to think about the fundamentals of supply, demand, and what happens with a trade. So this comes back to the basics. And if you're subscribed to the channel, maybe you've seen some of the videos, you've seen me talk about this a lot, because for me to trade in my price action way that I do, I really have to understand, have a good working knowledge of what is happening when a transaction takes place. You know, so we've got a buyer, we've got a seller, and then we have a trade, okay? Now that is the fundamentals of the market. Without that, we can't have a trade. We cannot transact. And so, you know, when we hear this kind of stuff, it's like, well, we've got to blame sellers for this. We've got to blame sellers. I even heard someone on CNBC, an authority figure, talking about uh, what I can't remember talking about crypto, I think he was. And the comment of, oh, there's more sellers than buyers has been why it's going down. It's just a common misconception and misunderstanding of what's happening in price. Okay. For a trade to take place, we have to have a buyer and a seller. If I want to buy something, unless somebody sells it to me, we cannot have a deal, right? That's the same in the whole entire universe of stuff. If I want to buy something, unless I find a seller, if I want to buy a property, if I want to buy a car, if I want to buy an apple, the same if I want to buy a stock, unless I can find somebody to sell me that, then there's no trade takes place. And the way the market works, specifically if we keep on stocks, the way the stock market works is that I go to the exchange, NYSE, NASDAQ, LSE, whatever it may be, and I say, hey, I'd like to buy this number of shares of this stock. I go onto the exchange and I buy that. Now I go through a broker who does that on my behalf, or potentially, I might use a CFD or a spread bet, which is slightly different because the seller happens to be the broker that I'm using in that example. But let's look at the, it's really ultimately the same, there is a seller, but let's keep the exchange example. I come in, I buy, let's say 100 shares of Apple. I buy 100 shares of Apple. I want to buy 100 shares of Apple. I need somebody to sell me 100 shares of Apple or I don't buy. Okay, so we have to have a buyer for every seller. And that's something that, you know, we have to kind of really remember when we're trading because otherwise we can get into the trap of, oh, there's more buyers and sellers. And there's never more buyers and sellers. The reason the market goes up is because buyers are more aggressive and are prepared to pay a higher price. There may well be more buyers wanting to buy, but the actual transactions is always going to be one buyer for every seller. There may well be more buyers who are looking to buy, in which case they're prepared to pay more and more and more and more. A great analogy would be, you know, a house on a, on a street or a house in a really great area. It's a great house, it's got a pool, it's got outbuildings, lovely house, great property, great condition, good price, it's not overpriced, it's a fair price, and you've perhaps got, you know, five or six people who can afford that who are looking to buy that house. Now, are there more buyers and sellers before the trade takes place? Yes, there are. Are they outbidding each other potentially because they want it? Yes, that can happen, as can happen in stocks. If you have a selection of buyers and they all want to pay more, they might all kind of jostle and jostle. Now, let's assume it's on the market for three million. Some buyers are gonna say they all want it for three million. Someone says, you know what, I'll pay 3.1. Someone says, I'm gonna pay 3.2. Someone says, I'll pay 3.2. The other guys drop off. They might then raise and say, I'll pay 3.5, I'll pay four. You get the point. That could be what causes the value of the transaction to go up, but it doesn't mean there are more buyers and sellers after they've transacted. There always has to be one seller of the house, one buyer of the house. The fact that they agree on a higher price might be because there is more demand. And if you flip it on the other side, there could be like a thousand houses in the street and one buyer, and there's a lot more supply coming on. Same kind of thing with the market. So, but for every buyer, we have to have a seller. Now, it's also the urgency of the buyer and the seller. So going back to the initial question, which was asked, which if nobody sold, what would happen to stocks? Well, if nobody sold, for one thing, the stock market wouldn't go up because the price that you could have, a, it, it, back to the analogy of the house and the nice street, three million pounds. If everyone's there saying, I wanna buy, I wanna buy, give me 10 million, give me 20 million. If that seller, if she doesn't wanna sell that property, then there's no trade done. And don't forget price in the market 
price is determined by the last trade in the majority of instances. There's some really, really thin stuff. It's not the case, especially on some exchanges, but for 99% of the case in terms of market cap, 99.9% probably, it's determined by the last price. So if no transaction takes place, there's no last price, there's no new valuation. And valuation of a company is based on the price multiplied by the shares in issue to give you the market cap. And so if transactions weren't taking place, trades weren't taking place, the value of that company would not go up or not go down so without sellers you could not have the market moving up now you could say well I want a few sellers and yes you could have that but then of course if there's a massive demand for something there's only a few sellers if they have to buy something and sometimes we see this in commodities you have a forced purchase for whatever reason don't need to go into those details now but you can imagine why you might want to force purchase you've got to feed yourself you've got to feed something you've got to heat something you've got to fuel something you've got to have energy that might be a forced purchase you don't have to be forced to purchase stocks unless there are some scenarios, of course, if you're covering a short, this, that, the other. But generally speaking, if you don't have, if it's way too much or if there's not enough stock for you to take, you're not going to buy it. You're going to look elsewhere. So we need sellers. We need buyers. We need a two-way transaction. We need liquidity and we need this supply demand to shift. So the other thing is, well, is this other sellers causing like the recent bear market? We're having the recent downdraft in, in oil, the recent downdraft in, in uh, some of the bigger tech stocks. And yes and no, don't forget for every buyer, we have to have a seller, but we're just flipping the script a little bit here. People are just saying, okay, I'm prepared to sell. And now we're kind of imagining that analogy in the houses on the street. Let's say now we're looking at five houses on the street and they're all trying to sell and now we only have two buyers all of a sudden this guy says i want to get out of this house i need to move on I need with the money or i want to do this he drops his price now buyers are looking so that's quite interesting assume they're all identical houses by the way she drops her price he and you can see now buyers are less aggressive they're waiting they're like you know what market's coming to me price is coming to me i don't have to be bidding higher and higher and higher to get what i want anymore i can wait i can step back i can say you know what i'm going to put a silly bid in i'm going to uh, half a million he's like no no i want three million for it and the guy says all right i'll give you two million no 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 i want and you can see that eventually a transaction might take place at 2.2 million deals done they're happy they're happy and that then becomes the new price for that stock. In other words, the stock in the stock in the street. So because we have that overhang of one or the other, that's causing it. But if we back to the initial question, what would happen to stocks? We wouldn't be able to rally, we wouldn't be able to do anything. We need those sellers. We need the sellers on the way up, people who are cashing in, people who are doing whatever, taking profits, moving into another market filtering money out but then because we need the bigger buyers if we're long uh, or, or larger buyers or more aggressive buyers to keep stepping up and keep stepping up that's when we get the rise but if we didn't have sellers we wouldn't have any market at all so you know we can't blame sellers if you're long and you and get the market's going against you you can't blame sellers you do need sellers it's just one side is more aggressive than the other and you know they're the ones that are prepared to pay less or pay, to pay more if we look on the upside which is causing the change in price so that's just a fundamental thought guys we've got to remember that for every trade that takes place we've got to have a buyer and seller whether it's one unit whether it's a million units whatever it may be and that's how price is ultimately determined all right guys whatever you're doing investing trading take care keep risk managed bye-bye